Hey, you keep laughing. You keep on laughing. Amen. Beloved Tanya's like, will you stop laughing? And here I am egging her on, and you keep on laughing. Hey. Hey, I'm not going to. I apologize for laughing with her. I didn't know what it was about. I take it back. It's not funny. You know, that's, that's got to be like the most horrible joke ever. Hey, you know, it's, yeah, I know. I know what you did. <laughs> Sis said she would have to deal with. <laughs> no, but you know why I got your back? Uh, Emmaus is making a joke that nobody snores louder than I do. And um, they were like talking about all these people that I don't even know. And they were like copying the way they snore and, you know, going, ah! And I'm like, there is no way I'm louder than that. And they're like, yes, you are. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. And they were, they were laughing just like that. So, family, let's just lay hands on this person right here because she's not even paying attention. I love you, Dina. Dina just stopped laughing when I looked at her. <laughs> it ain't funny. I need your help tonight, as always, in every worship service. I sp- praise God I can speak for pastor when I say this. Uh, we worship God, and we just do it verbally in the anointing that Holy Spirit blesses us with. I understand completely that everybody here can preach, even this beautiful little girl right here. I know you can, beloved child of God. You're awesome. But what we have to understand about God Almighty is that there's an order. Right? There's an order. Can you say that with me? Order. Order. And in his order, God doesn't even come against it. And he can if he wanted to, but he's not a liar. God is not a liar. So what God puts in place, the order that he puts in place, he sees it through based in that order. Amen? And I've been noticing a lot. um, Family, I've just been talking to a lot of people and trying to minister to them. But then I find, and I think Pastor could back me up on this too, that I find that the way this devil is working now and all these demons is he's trying to use as far as helping others as a huge distraction. And it's so evil because they really don't want want the help from Jesus. They just want to tell you garbage after garbage. And basically the star of their story is them, not God. And Father's quick to quicken my spirit, Holy Spirit, say his name, Holy Spirit, Spirit. for for, for me to just make this statement tonight before we open up in prayer and go into this word. You're going to be blessed beyond measure in this word, I promise you in Jesus' name. It's going to rock your world because it's all Holy Spirit. But I say all this to you that I worship God, I am a pastor, I said yes to the Lord, that means I am going to be held accountable at a whole nother level that I'm, I'm so scared of, Brother Chris. I'm so scared. And I thank God for brothers like you in my life. That I could go to the gym and just feel God's presence and laugh and, you know, and crack up. And even, you know, just meeting with people outside of church and just being, you know, encouraging to one another. Or just texting, you know, just saying a text like, hey, man, I love you. God bless you. But what I can't be a part of. And I know pastor has my back, but I'm going to say this even with, we have two elders in there as well, to be held totally accountable. What I cannot be a part with you is when you come against me as your pastor because I hurt your feelings. I never planted this seed in my entire life as a Christian. Let me, let me pause right there. Trish and I. Ever since we said yes and received Lord Jesus Christ, I never, ever, I never, ever went up to a pastor and said, you know your message hurt my feelings. I have enough fear of God where I can take it up with the Lord and say, Father, why did that hurt me so much? And I thank God that we were obedient all these years and we will never do it. Because I'll tell you right now, Pastor himself, yes, I'm pointing to him. Pastor John himself has preached things that cut me deep, that hurt me. Pastor, have I ever come up to you in these four years? Where I, oh, you hurt my feelings. What I'm saying is, is that when you do something like this, 
it doesn't only affect me and you help Satan himself attack me, your pastor, but it also puts stress in my relationship with my wife because my mind now is going through, man, what, what is wrong with this person? What is going on? I never planted this seed, but guess what? Somebody came along and deposited some evil seeds. And I'm asking you, as the body of Christ, as holy people of God, filled with his love, we don't judge, we don't gossip, right? Can I get an amen? amen. Will you help? <laughs> Will you help God first and help your church, but help God first? that you're not gonna be a part of this. If you have the spirit of offense in your life, that means that the devil is running havoc in your heart and in your mind, and you're insecure. You're insecure. This means that when you hear something and it triggers that insecurity, you don't hear the word of God, you don't listen to the preacher, you don't even read the scripture, you're just stuck on the fact that, why did you hurt me? Once again, you will get hurt. Are you kidding me? You think you could call on the name of Lord Jesus Christ and you don't have to change? You got another thing coming if that's the case. But if you know for a fact that, you know what? I have been getting short-tempered. I have been insecure. You know, there's been a rise of people coming, you know, just people I don't even know coming up to me in the community. You know, oh, I did this for years. I did this for years in the ministry. And I want to come to your church. And I want to do that. No. Why don't you come and worship? Amen. And guess what? I'm the hateful one when I say that. I'm the evil one. I'm the one that got a problem. So be it. But the thing is, is that we've become conditioned in this perverse generation that Christianity is just a compromise to say, well, you know what, I don't really need to live right. I can call on this name. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. But basically, that's just my insurance. Guess what? I've heard people say this. And I rebuked them, and I'm saying, that's your relationship with God? Insurance? Really? So I beg you tonight, before we even pray, let's get our hearts right. Maybe it's you that I'm talking to tonight. Maybe you, you heard this and you're like, man, you know what? I did get offended in the last place I was at. And I left there and I didn't address it with God that I asked for forgiveness. Guess what? We need to get right. This is Holy Spirit's church, family. Amen? But I don't need you planting all these evil seeds because you have insecurity or a past hurt. Guess what? Is it not covered by the blood? Amen? Amen. Are we not forgiven? Amen? Listen, I don't care if you did something wrong. I don't. I don't judge you. I love you. I don't. But guess what? That's in the past. Let it be in the past. Amen? But moving forward, we got to stop this right now. I don't know if you guys keep count, but we ha we've had over 30 salvations in the past month. Over 30. And you know what's amazing? Having that magnitude of a harvest of souls, I have people that's been coming here for years having the nerve and audacity come up, come up to me or text me or call me and tell me, oh, you know I got hurt by your message. They need that. Thank you, Pastor. And that's why I know we're one. Because I'll tell them, you needed it. No, I didn't. I'll rebuke you. You're going to rebuke a pastor? You check yourself. Amen. Check yourself. Amen? I'm going to get off of that. I'm going to get off of that now. We're done. All right? I'm begging you guys. I'm begging you guys. If it's, if it's you that you have a spirit of offense, and maybe you don't tell me, but you go run in your mouth to somebody else about, I can't believe Pastor Joey said that, and you know what? I don't, it's the same thing. God has nothing to do with it. Amen? Kill that thing at the altar. Give it to God. Say, Father, I'm sorry I've been running my mouth. 
I promise you in Jesus' name, you get right with the Lord, get ready because the floodgates of heaven be wide open and he will bless your, your socks off. Amen? But don't, don't go down that road of, of, of grumbling, complaining, of doing things like that. Don't, just, tell me, just tell me right now, don't do it. Don't do it. Put it this way, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that to anybody. Like I said, in all these years, as in all these years being blessed, being saved, I thank God, Pastor, I thank God. God, only Holy Spirit could put it in our hearts. Never, never approach a pastor and say, well, you know, you hurt me. Now, don't get me wrong. There's many times Christian and I will go to the car and be like, man, that was a deep message. And she'll tell me, repent. Or I'll tell her, you know why it hurts. You know why it hurts. We got some things that we need to take care of. Amen. Are you all still happy? Praise God. We just had to address that. Amen. Y'all stand up on your feet. Let's pray. I believe and declare that as you stand up, it just shows as far as the mighty harvest in Jesus' name. That you are the seed of Christ and that you stood up. Here you are, resurrected in Christ's name. Hallelujah. With all of his glory, all of his might. I believe that when you stood up, the things that were holding you down or binding you down broke off of you in Jesus' name. Amen. How can I believe that? Because God is good and he loves us. Amen. And he lives inside of us. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, and your sword, Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit. And Father God, as one body in you, I thank you, Father. I'm sorry, Father God. I'm sorry if I ever hurt you, which I know I did. But Father God, with what you, what you have just said right now, Father God, that we will not, we will not complain. We will not gossip. We rebuke the spirit of offense. We only welcome you, Holy Spirit. And Father God, forgive us if we take our past or our, or our insecurities. Forgive us, Father God, if we, if we just say things that we're not supposed to say. Put a guard across our mouth, Father. Right now, Heavenly Father, just like with every soul that, that stands here, that's blessed to, to worship you in this capacity, to stand here, to speak to your holy children, Father, may it only be your words, Holy Spirit. I plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ over Open Arms Community Church, over all of your churches, Heavenly Father. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us. Help us. We never want to hurt you. We don't want to offend you, Father. So, Father God, I just thank you so much for your anointing. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord Jesus Christ. In your holy, mighty, and precious name, and all God's people said, amen. God bless you guys. Give somebody a high five, amen. Oh, my goodness, that hurt. A friendly reminder that this Sunday uh, we have our big potluck. Praise God! Now you guys know you guys heard the difference when Elder Charlie says the announcement versus me. Elder Charlie will tell you take a side dish, take a side dish, and and he'll tell you take a side dish or dessert. I say bring both. Amen. You don't have to, but I don't want to limit God. Right. So bring your, bring, bring your, bring both, amen? Let's not limit God, hallelujah. Our worship tonight is titled, say this with me, God's word. However, say this also, God's sword. Amen. Say it again, God's word. Say it again, God's sword. What God is going to do tonight is he's going to show you how he has equipped you and how you can put his kingdom principles to work starting tonight in your life. And, and one, of the, one of the biggest things about this is that this does not only apply towards spiritual warfare. It doesn't. It doesn't just apply to that. It applies to everything. And I ask you to test it with the Lord. See, what a lot of people don't know is that in the heavenly realms there's this all-out war taking place. And in this war, the darkness, Satan, the devils, are trying their best to torment as many souls as possible. Right? You, 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 you don't see the spiritual realm. However, if you're a beloved child of God and you have the anointing, the presence of Holy Spirit in you, you can discern and see the chaos taking place all throughout the world. You can actually go into an environment and you can feel it. And the glory of God is that when you feel it, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, help me. 
Father, I plead your holy blood. Father, send your angels right now to protect me. I pray that you're doing that. If you're not, guess what? Ding, 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 ding. There, there's a bonus right there. You need to start doing that. Why? Because you're using your voice, the word, to ask Father God in faith to help you there at that very moment. Amen? God will do it. Can you say that with me? God will do that. So what we're doing is we're going to Matthew 12, 36, and we were just going to go straight to 37, but then the Holy Spirit today said, no, I want you to pause after the first part. I want, you, I want to get into as far as the book of Hebrews, Apostle Paul wrote to the Hebrews, and how he was putting that in action as far as the Word of God. And we've been through that scripture, it's familiar to you guys, so nothing is, nothing's going to be unfamiliar. What is going to be unfamiliar that I'm excited about, I'm very excited about, Amen. Is Matthew 10, 32 to 39. And we're going to get deep into that because I believe that, uh, I, I thank God that Open Arms Community Church is just a real church. Amen. We're broken people. We're broken people serving a perfect God. Amen. Amen. Ain't not one of us perfect, and we know this. Not one of us tries to hide it, right, because, hello, all right. Hello, right? <laughs> work in progress. Amen? But praise God at his work. Amen? So it's done. So let's get right into this, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be flowing pretty quickly, especially since uh, that took a while to lay down the foundation earlier. I say to you that every idle word men or women may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. This is from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me, agape. agape. We have to keep in mind, because how many of you would agree that you could even turn a Christian station on, you could listen to televangelists, I got nothing against them. Listen, family, I don't judge nobody, amen? amen. But hear what I'm trying to tell you. You can go and listen to other preachers and everything else. But how many of you would agree that there's this common thing going on where every message is just trying to build you up. Every message is, oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. God is on your side. It don't even matter. You just keep on speaking the blessings, and you get the blessings from the Lord. You now you listen up. If you want the blessing, he will bless you with what you put in that basket. If you put a dollar in that basket, he's going to give you a dollar back. But if you put a hundred in there, he's going to give you a hundred back. I'm not judging nobody, but I'm saying I got ears to hear. I've heard, right? What's so sad about this is that if you condition yourself to only hear from a preacher, build me up and bless me, but I don't want no correction, huh? Then what kind of relationship is that with the Lord? Is there a relationship? Huh? Let me ask you something. What if I go home after a long day? Hey, Trish, stop. I had a really long day and I'm very hungry. I want you to make me some steak and maybe some mashed potatoes. I want you to run me a bath and I want it to be at this temperature. I want you to put bubbles in it. And I want you to rub my feet. And when you're done rubbing my feet, I want you to scratch my hair. When you're done with that, I want you to massage my back. And I want you to wait until I go to sleep before you do anything. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Sarge, Sarge said, eh, eh. Trish is over here going like this. Tr hey, Pastor, Trish is like, you better finish this message. I'm about to throw my shoe at you, right? Right? But see, but see, isn't that amazing that that right there, as you can tell, I can't even really, you know, act that out because that to me is asinine. That is really like crazy. Seriously. And she knows that too. But that. But that's how we treat him. That's how we treat who? God. Yes. Amen. That's how we treat God, right? We come to church with all this baggage. We get here and 
God, here's all my stuff. Help me. Heal me. Provide for me. This preacher better say what I want to hear. Okay, he just offended me. I'm done. My question, family, is what has happened to us? What has happened to us, right? How is this okay now? Look at the way this world is. I just shared with Pastor the other day that there's this thing that now, now they're, they're saying there's no gender. And now they're, they're saying there's no human or animals. That it's just all one being. Can you imagine going into the restroom at Walmart and seeing a litter box? And somebody popping a squat on the litter box? <laughs> just looking at you? That's what it's coming to. It's pure evil. Our only identity that we can possibly have is from the creator who made us. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's our identity. He's our identity. And so I, I, and so I say all this because of the fact that look at what Lord Jesus Christ says. He makes it real simple. He says, based on every word you speak, he emphasizes your idle word. What's an idle word? Huh? Garbage? Gossip. Good word, Sarge. Gossip? What else is idle word? Maybe bad jokes? Anything that doesn't honor God? Anybody else? What else idle word? Cussing? Huh? Blaspheme? Right? But isn't it amazing that here as a Christian, we think, you call on Lord Jesus. Yes, all your sins are forgiven. I hear, hear me now. Yes, they are. The Bible says so, and this is true. But isn't it amazing, though, that we don't teach in a relationship with God, be careful what you speak? Why is that overlooked? Huh? Why is that overlooked? I'll tell you why. People don't like it, sis. Sister Meyer, people are like, don't tell me how to live. Don't tell me. You just preach the message. And you preach the message and make me laugh, make me feel good, and we're good. But if you preach the message and you tell me how I'm supposed to live my life now, or how I'm supposed to act, or how I'm supposed to speak, how dare you? But this is why Lord Jesus Christ came. What is this doing here? I keep grabbing this thing. <laughs> keep grabbing it. So let's go into this. Say it with me, word. word. In this title, God's Word, which is one of my favorite titles. You've seen this title before. I think it's been a couple years ago. In this title, God's Word, there's this word, word, right? When you talk about the word before Lord Jesus Christ, here's the word. Say it with me, the scrolls. The scrolls, basically the Old Testament, Old Covenant, right? This was... The holy word. And from that word, this is what happened. Do you see them? Sadducees, Pharisees, right? Now listen, we fast forward through many, many years, obviously. Because right now, now we're, we're going into a scene of Lord Jesus Christ showing up to the scene. But where I'm getting at with this is that God's word was black and white on paper, correct? And what happened? Us as people, as humans, we took that word and we ran with it. Can you get an amen? amen? And what happens when we ran in it? I'm going to show you that's what happens. You know why? Because we are not God. We are not God. But what did they do? They took God's word and they made it their own in a way where I will go ahead and teach you this word based on what I think and how I feel about it. But they had no idea how God felt about it. They had no idea how, they had no idea as far as what God wanted to say about that. They did things their own way. Can I get an amen? amen. 
And so check this out. With this word, Father God Almighty said, here, I'm going to send the word. What's his name? Lord Jesus Christ, right? You have any, if you have any challenges about that, read John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word is God. Amen? And that's why we have that above our baptistry because it just shows as far as that glorious moment when Lord Jesus Christ came out of that water. Father God spoke and said, how happy is this is my beloved. Heaven's open. Amen? And Holy Spirit came down and, whoo, like a light bulb. Hallelujah. And for, for once and for final, forever, the light is in this world. Amen? And so we see this that, okay, so the word changed into a living being. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. He is the word of God. Amen? So from that word, what did we do to that word? Tortured him. Blasphemed him. Spit on him. Cussed him. They didn't do it. I did. How can you say that, Joey? I lived a life of sin. Far darker than anybody that, that no one can compare. I did that to him. But by his mercy and grace, he forgave me. Say it with me, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Now God says that you are forgiven, but have you forgiven yourself? Huh? Huh? Beloved Brittany, God forgave you everything. But isn't it up to Brittany to say, I am forgiven? Or does it happen on a Wednesday evening at maybe 11 o'clock at night where the thought comes and says, how can you really be forgiven? Look at all the stuff you've done. And then that devil, all that devil wants is a conversation, Brother Chris. Amen. And don't you love it that when your beloved daughter speaks up like that, she says, I'll send it back to the pit of hell where it belongs, right? Amen. But what about those that don't have that relationship with the Lord and they hear it, right? They hear the accusations of the devil, right? Is that God's word speaking? That's a different word, right? That's the word of condemnation that comes from the author of death, Satan himself. How dare you call yourself a Christian? Brother James, how dare you sit there? You don't... Look at all the things you've done in your past. It's up to you. It's up to our brother James to say, hey, man, I did do some right there. Or shut up, Satan. I'm covered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot speak to me. Hallelujah. The truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Such an anointing on stars. So we see what we did to the word of God. We crucified it. Why? Because we did not want to hear anymore about this person named Jesus Christ talking about how much God loves us and all this stuff about love. You know why? It gets to the point where it's so condemning when you're filled with hate. Oh, come on now, family. The reason why some souls cannot receive Jesus or refuse to receive Jesus is because they're eat up with unforgiveness and anger and hate. But when you break through by just showing them that there is a God and he loves you, how do you know God loves me? I'm an evil person. I've done so many horrible things. How can you say that? Jesus. Jesus. He died for you. Oh, you're just one of those Jesus freaks that just love Jesus. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And that's why I'm talking to you, Crunchy. So that you can become one too. And stop living a stinky life and start living a life that, oh, just smells so good. Amen? Say it with me, word. And this is the word, amen? So when we look at these two pictures, here, here's, here comes the test. What time is it, honey? Praise God. We see word and we, so we see word. What's his name? Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Holy Spirit's teaching us. Amen. Holy Spirit's teaching us. This is where we pause for a moment. Which Jesus do you serve? 
<laughs> Amen. All right, so good question, because some of you are like, how do we pick? All right, you either say left or right, or one or number two, or first or second. Right, two. Amen. Because our Jesus is no longer on that cross anymore, right? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Our Jesus ain't in that tomb no more. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Our Jesus ain't in hell no more saving more souls. He did. He, he saved every soul in those three days that we're still trying to catch up to that number. But I'll tell you right now, it's getting close. It's getting close. Can I get a hallelujah? We're getting there. Ooh, we're getting there. Whew, he could feel it. Hallelujah. You getting cold chills too? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Brother Anthony. Amen. You got to be excited for it. Amen. Now say this word with me, sword. sword. All right, so we're going to transition real quick. We'll go back into the word. But remember, the title of this message is God's sword. Because I promise you, if you just open your heart and your mind and worship tonight, you just said it, Lord Jesus, I worship you. I know you're seated at the throne. You're no longer in the grave. You don't need to go back on that cross. You're perfect. You did everything perfect, my Lord Jesus Christ. This is what I love about Christianity. What you display in your life is the evidence of what you believe in our God. Woo! Hallelujah! What you display in your walk, in your talk, in your marriage, in your children, in your house is a direct reflection of who you believe and the worship that you have unto Lord Jesus Christ. Your relationship with God, Holy Spirit will tell you if you have one or not. Can I get an amen? Don't you love it? We're so blessed. We're rooted here in God's most beloved church in all this world. I'm not hating on any other churches. How dare I? But I'm telling you right now, this is the greatest, most anointed church in all of this world. You know why? Holy Spirit's here. He runs this place. There's order all throughout the church. Amen? You're surrounded by brothers and sisters that fear God Almighty. Hallelujah. I mean, we fear him. But it's not this fear where it's like, oh, he's going to beat me. No, I fear God because you love me this much. You love me this much. I'm not, I'm not going to let you down. I'm not going to say a bad word. I'm not going to talk about my brother and sister, even if they cuss me. Listen, no matter what you do, every one of you, no matter what you do to me, I promise you, in Jesus' name, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know why? He took it for me. And God called me to take it. But I will tell you when I say enough is enough, you better watch out. Because I done tattletale to my daddy. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Pastor, you know. I done tattletale to our daddy. And daddy says, okay, son. I know what they did. I was already there. You did the right thing. Just repent and let me handle it. Let me take care of it. Amen. Thank you, sir. Say with me, Sword. So here's a sword in the past, of course, before Lord Jesus Christ. And then, of course, here's a sword during Lord Jesus Christ. You see that word right there, the Bible, and you see the, the sword. But the question is, is that the true question, because we hear this sword of the Spirit a lot. And I believe if we're not too careful, we start to sound Christianese. We start to say all these big words, and we get lost in it. Not really having reverence and understanding and the depth and power and the magnitude of this word, sword. Amen? Truly, what is the sword? Where is the sword? Let's read this real quick. And I know you guys know this scripture. And I love this. We're going to revisit it. It's actually part of our Monday night Bible study. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division. Say with me, Division. Of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, well, pastor, how do I do that? All you got to say is Jesus Christ is Lord. See, there's, it's really that simple. There's, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to wave flags. 
You don't have to go into convulsions, right? You, you, you don't have to act like somebody. You don't have to speak in tongues. You just say, Jesus Christ is Lord. And in that confession, when you say, Jesus Christ is Lord, immediately, Holy Spirit, his presence is in you. I'm going to ask somebody, I'm going to ask you all to do this. this. This is amazing. Everybody put out your hand like that. Hold out your hand, close your eyes. And Father God, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to touch the palms of your beloved children. That your anointing, Father God, floods them, but they could physically feel your presence, Father God, touching their palms. Because Holy Spirit, you are God Almighty, you are real. And Father God, we're doing this all to glorify your perfect sacrifice, Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father God, I just thank you right now that in your anointing, in your holy presence, Father, that as you touch every soul, that the very breath they take, your anointing, your glory, your light, your presence within them, Father, floods them greater today, right now, Father, than ever before, and it will continue to grow in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Now, show of hands, how many of you felt Holy Spirit? To look around. Look around, family. Look around, family. Please look around. In Jesus' name, please look around. God Almighty, touch your palm. And I'm just telling you right now, this is how real this is. Please. Amen. Because I believe sometimes this world tries to be too real, sis. People hurt us. People abandon us. We get treated like trash, like garbage. And we get to the point where it's like, gosh, what's happening? What's wrong? And God, our beloved father, he said, nothing's wrong, my beloved daughter. Nothing's wrong. The devil's been trying, but I'm going to put a stop to that right now. And father God says, I'm going to change your life. And I'm going to bless you with my presence that is beyond what you can comprehend or understand. And I'm going to equip you with the sword. Amen? Amen. Do you receive that right now? Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. All right, so to go over this quickly, praise God. This is truly God's sword. Okay. <laughs> Why would you need a knife? The Holy Spirit just made me laugh. Sorry. <laughs> Why would you need a knife, right? Isn't it to cut things? Right? That's what the Holy Spirit just said. Why do you need a knife to cut things away? Hello? Right? To cut things away. And see, what God did through Christ is his word was released. It manifested in Jesus. Remember, Mary, everybody knows Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary says, be unto me according to thy word. Amen? Word. Let's try that again. <laughs> Half the room gave me a wrong answer. According to thy word. Right? Because she heard the word from the angel. But the angel was waiting for her word. Are you catching this kingdom principle? The, the angel was waiting. The angel's like, I got all authority from God. I'm right here. Isn't that beautiful? The angel's representing, right, Brother Chris? I'm right here. This is what's going to happen. But guess what? Nothing could happen until she spoke the word. And she said, okay, everything to me. According to your word, poof, there's Jesus. Right? And not like that. I know how babies are made. But, you know, like, oh, right? Hallelujah. Now, the word, the word was the only one who can carry the sword. Say it with me, God's sword. And the sword had to be placed in an area so that it can cut things away. The sword had to go into the area to cut things away. And that is the sword that is displayed right there. This is the division that took place. You see what Lord Jesus Christ did? He said, mine, mine, mine. Did Lord Jesus Christ pick a certain nationality? Did he pick only super handsome Hawaiians? 
Did he pick only black people? Did he pick only Jewish people? God died for the world, right? He loves the world. So you have these two, and this is what it says here. And this is what the, the, the meat of everything for tonight. Therefore, whoever confesses me before man, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Amen. Every one of you all has confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. This is the beauty of the justification that comes through that confession of faith. Lord Jesus Christ himself stands at the throne. On that glorious day when he comes back, when, when that trumpet goes off, we're all going to have that one-on-one -on -one moment. Amen. So, yeah, so don't fret. I know all of us here at Open Arms is like, man, we're just going to be, you know, running over on top of each other, biting each other. And I doubt it's going to be the case, but I believe it will give God a good laugh. You know what I mean? We don't know how to act when we're up there just running towards him. I could see that happening because we're just so excited. But you're all going to have your one-on-one -on -one with, with the Father. But here's the glory of that. When you're standing one-on-one -on -one with the Father, fa Father, <laughs> Father, Father, when you're standing one-on-one -on -one in his presence, here is our glorious sa Savior in all the splendor, in all his majesty standing there and just looking at you going, you are mine. And I am yours. And the beauty is, is that you'll have to hold account for everything. But guess what? Even though you have to answer, you're covered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Isn't that awesome? Praise God. So check this out. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. That's already happening right now. This world is a dark world. Guess what? You are the light. You Say it with me. I am the light. You are the light of God. You are saved through his blood. His light lives inside of you. Wherever you go, his light goes before you. Can I get an amen? amen. Now we're going to get deep. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. What was that now, Pastor? Pastor, did you just make this up? But Pastor, all I heard is peace. This is where I'm going to ask you to, to man up and woman up and hear this. What, what Lord, Lord Jesus said this himself. But this is how severe this is. Don't think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother. And a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy will be those of his own household. Does that not sound like the world we live in right now? He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he who finds his life will lose it. But check this out. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. You see this sword that is displayed, that same sword that went to hell and saved the souls, that same sword that raised Jesus Christ from the grave, Holy Spirit, his light, is in you. And this sword that God is referring to here, not too many people are going to be accepting God's presence. Especially those who want to live in darkness. I will tell you, the hardest people to minister to is your own family members. And if you wonder why, go to the word of God. Lord Jesus Christ teaches it. There is no honor there's no honor because of familiarity anyone having to do in your own family. But do you stop there? No. That's why we are the family of God. Right? You call on a brother. You call on a sister and say, look, I got this crazy uncle. Why don't you reach out to him? Praise God, I will. Give me his number. Let me go and talk to him real quick, right? Let's go love on him. But this is how we effectively use this sword to cut the devil off. And to keep the unity of God's people. Amen? How many of you have already experienced 
family that said, I want nothing to do with you. You're just crazy. Right? And it hurts. It hurts. But I pray that you, you find hope and reassurance that all Father's asking you to do is continue to pray for them. To lift them up. Amen? Don't forget them. Because as you pray for them and lift them up, I promise you in Jesus' name, God Almighty has sent angels, saints, to minister to them. To retrieve that soul. Amen? This is what it's all about right here. Amen? I'm going to ask everybody to stand up on your feet for me, please. What's amazing to me is that in this day and age that we live in, I have some... I have some brothers that are in the same capacity in the ministry that I am. And what really, what really shakes me to my core is when I ask them, Pastor, I ask them, I said, you know, Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And believe it or not, some of them say, I really don't know. And Holy Spirit immediately tells me that they're so consumed with all the fear in the world. And it's true. There's so many pastors that are committing suicide. It's an alarming rate. There's so many of us pastors that are battling depression, anxiety, all, these, all this darkness. You know why? It starts with not using God's word according, based on the Holy Bible. And secondly, it's not demonstrating the power of the word with the almighty sword. Rest assured, as long as I have breath in Jesus' name, and as long as God has me here, we will always be worshiping Lord Jesus Christ, and we will only listen to Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. We, will not, we will not waver. Listen, we will not waver. And Pastor will tell you, we will fight to make sure that this stays the holy house of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is no compromise to the word of God. We believe the Holy Bible from front to back. Amen. And we only go by the Holy Bible. But hear my heart, family. Even the devil knows the Holy Bible. But what the devil cannot be in the presence of is Holy Spirit. And this is why I beg you tonight. We only got one song. We only got one song. This is what I beg you tonight. Have you been using God's word to bless God Almighty and to assist his angels to do a mighty work starting in you and in your family and in your church, in your community? Or are you using the word of God and you sound just like the rest of the world? There has to be a change. If all you do is talk about everything that is wrong, what is going to be in your life? Wrong. Oh, but Brother Chris, check this. But if you can make that sacrifice, remember we just talked about it on Sunday, brother. If you could slave your mind to the, to the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. If you could slave your mind saying, I'm a slave of Lord Jesus. Father, I have no rights. That means if David was to cuss me, I'll just say, man, I love you. And that hurt me, but I love you. And I'm sorry that I offended you. What, do, what does that display? Sister Lisa, that displays that I am yours, Father. I'm your prisoner. And this is the beauty. Holy Spirit will manifest himself in you. Because of your obedience, your sacrifice. And you just start speaking the blessings over your life, over your marriage, amen, over your children. Listen, let's stop talking negative, right? If something's hurting in your body, stop talking about it. You start saying, I command this in Jesus' name to be healed. Hallelujah, I command my body to line up with you, Holy Spirit. I command my organs to function correctly, Father God, because I'm covered by your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. 
But here it is again in Christianity, in which I love so much. I can't make you do it. God can't make you do it. It has to be your choice and your relationship unto Father God Almighty. Amen. Will you do that tonight with me? Praise God. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Oh, one more thing. I forgot about this. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned.